We're heading down to the Mediterranean for today's lead guide to the southern European state of Italy. From the nation's capital of Rome, the ancient islands of Sicily and Sardinia, to the mountains of the Alps bordering Switzerland and Austria, this is a nation where food is king, the towers are built at an angle, and the Pope calls it his home. But there's more to Italian football than Catanaccio, Gattuso, and a penalty from Fabio Grosso. Today we're going to be getting the lowdown on the most interesting teams you can play with in your FIFA career mode. Football has actually been played in Italy since before Caesar crossed the Rubicon, with the game of Harpastum eventually evolving into medieval football. Of course, when the laws of medieval football were codified, this became association football, and that's what we all know and love today. With over 100 professional football teams and 3,000 semi-professional or amateur teams in the Italian football pyramid, unfortunately, this year's FIFA only contains the top 20 teams in Italy, as well as a couple of licensed Serie B teams. This means fallen giants such as 7-time Serie A winners Pro Vicelli cannot be used for an RTG. However, this does not mean you can't have fun when playing in the Mediterranean sun. I've picked out a few Serie A teams that you can have an engaging career mode with, and after that we'll have a look at the Serie A squad rules before finishing with a little bit of information about the fan culture in Italy. The old lady of Turin and the most successful team in Italy is also known as Juventus. With 36 league titles, 13 Italian cups and 2 Champions League, their trophy cabinet dwarfs the rest of Italy. Juventus are the most popular team in Italy, they have double the fans that the two Milan teams have and more than triple that of a team like Napoli. In the past few years, Juventus have moved away from stealing players from domestic teams to now attracting in-demand players such as Ronaldo, Paul Pogba as he was leaving Manchester United at 17 and Alvaro Morata despite competing with some of Europe's biggest clubs for these players' signatures. The last decade of Italian football belonged to Juventus, they won 9 of the 10 championships between 2010 and 2020, but 2021 looks like it slipped away from them. With an old Ronaldo leading the line, they need to start preparing for the future without their crop of superstars. They've been able to do this in key positions by signing players like Weston McKennie on loan, Dejan Kulusevski and Artur, but they need to start looking at younger players in defence, where they still feature a 33-year-old Leonardo Bonucci and a 36-year-old Giorgio Cialini. No team can dominate forever, and it looks like Juventus' time in the sun might be fading away. Moving down south, Internationale split away from the Milan Cricket and Football Club in 1908. Since then, the club has won 30 domestic trophies, including 18 league titles and 7 Italian Cups. Their last domestic title came during the only Italian treble in history back in 2010, where they won the UEFA Champions League, the Serie A and the Domestic Cup all in the same season. Since then, the dominance of Juventus has seen them hover between 9th and 4th in Serie A, until last season when Romelu Lukaku's arrival saw them finish in 2nd place. This year, they've gone one better, and they find themselves in 1st after 23 games. With a 4 point gap to enormous rivals AC Milan, they are under incredible pressure to finally end the title drought. The Inter squad is full of well-known players who have shown their quality for years around Europe and they're all at the peak of their abilities. Outside of the known talent, they also have players like Milan Skriniar, Alessandro Bastoni and Ashraf Hakimi who are yet to fully mature despite being part of this title charge. The future looks bright for Inter, but they'll need to keep a hold of these younger players while replacing their current stars when the time comes. You can't include one of the Milan sides without including the other. As mentioned earlier, the Rossoneri find themselves in second place just 4 points behind Inter Milan. For the past half a decade, AC Milan have been out of sorts and found themselves regularly finishing between 5th and 10th place, which is a huge downfall from being perennial title challengers in the late 80s to the middle of the 2000s. Their current talisman is of course the 39 year old Zlatan Ibrahimovic. After returning to Milan for the second time, the ex Inter striker has scored almost a goal per game, including some trademark spectacular strikes. Unlike their rivals, AC Milan have decided to go for a much younger set of players, including a squad that features Gianluigi Donnarumma, Frank Kessie, Theo Hernandez, and Jens Peter Hauge. AC Milan are preparing a base that has enough quality to compete at the top of European football again. The only thing that could stop AC continuing their surge back to where they feel they belong is if they don't achieve the success soon. 
Missing out on the title in a year where Juventus are poor might not be the catalyst for a mass departure, but with the amount of money Juventus have and are able to throw around, you can bet you'll see some of AC's current talent moving from red and white stripes to black and white stripes in the next few seasons. Rounding out the more interesting dominant teams in Italian football, we have Roma. Led for almost two decades by Francesco Totti, with his recent retirement, Roma have somewhat lost their identity. With a badge that displays the legendary origin story of Romulus and Remus, the Eternal City has not seen an Italian title since 2001. The team in 2001 included legends Cafu, Totti and Batistuta, all players who would have been worth tens of millions of pounds if they played in 2021. Since the title in 2001, De Rossi and Totti played a combined 1500 games, and despite their loyalty and unquestionable ability, the best they could push Roma to is 9 second place finishes. To compete at a higher level, Roma will need ageing players like Edin Dzeko to reach the heights he performed at in 2017, when he scored 37 goals across all competitions. Zeko leads the line, but alongside him, they also have Mkhitaryan and Pedro in a front three that is entirely over the age of 30. New blood will be needed in the attacking department, with Zanolio, Perez, Cliver all ready to be outstanding at their peak, but it will take some expert nurturing to get them to the level at Totti was known for playing at. At the other end of Serie A, you have Spezia, the Italian minnows who are having their first season in Serie A football. With not too much history outside of being one of a very small number of teams to beat the mighty Torino of the 1940s, they floated around Serie B and Serie C until 2008. Sports fraud in their board meant they became bankrupt, and this is not an uncommon thing for Italian football, with many lower league teams having extremely shaky finances. But nonetheless, they reformed a season later in Serie D or the 4th division of Italian football. Since then, their rise has been fast, if unspectacular, and after a few seasons of mid-table finishes, finally achieved playoff victory in 2020. Owned by American Robert Platek, Spezia are finally in the top flight. Their squad is poor compared to the rest of the league, but with the right signings they could easily avoid an immediate return to Serie B. Thankfully for Spezia, this is exactly what's happened, and they find themselves 10 points above the relegation zone after 23 games. This overachievement has not been reflected in FIFA very well, but they still have the worst squad by some distance, so this could be a really challenging team for you to pick and try and win the league with. So that's my pick of the 5 teams I think you could do a career mode with and have a lot of fun with. They have different challenges, the squads are in different states, a lot of Italian squads are, of course have very old players, so you'll always be having to do a rebuilding job if you do prefer the young wonder kid kind of play. But we're going to have a look at the squad rules now quickly and they're fairly simple too. It's 25 players like in all UEFA competitions, but 4 of them must have played at least 3 years in the youth team between ages of 16 and 21, and another 4 of them must have played at least 3 years in an Italian youth team. There's no limitation for under 21s, so you can have as many of those as you want in your squad. Each squad can also have an unlimited amount of foreign players, but if a club had less than one non-EU player in the roster as of the 30th of June the season before, the club is entitled to buy non-EU players from foreign clubs until the limit of three is reached with, with no restrictions placed on these players at all, such as transfer fees or age. The fan culture in Italy is another thing that you'll have to have a look at while you're managing in Italy. Ultras culture has become one of the most pervasive and dynamic forms of football in the 21st century. The style of support incorporates spectacular choreographies of flags, drums and flares, as well as incorporating chants and clapping to make a visual spectacle for everyone. Ultras are overwhelmingly proud of their club and hometown, and they consider it central to their identity as people. It had its origins in Italy in the late 1970s, but this extreme style of fan culture has now spread across the world. Germany, Britain, France and Eastern Europe are all big players in the ultra culture now. Much of the time, ultra groups will attend games while not paying attention to the match, but instead to support their community or identity, which they pin on their local football team. If the team is doing well, then the passion shown is a pride of their performances. If the team plays poorly, it's shaming and aggressive to already nervy players, which can cause spirals in form. This can lead to dramatic stories such as underdogs massively overperforming, but can also cause the downfall of giants when the pressure gets too much for the players. If you want a successful career mode, you're going to have to keep the fans on your side.
So that is my look into Italian Serie A uh, in FIFA career mode. I hope you liked the video, it was one that I had to do quite a bit of research into because although I do pay a little bit of attention to Italian football, it's definitely not my strong point. If you're Italian and you've got anything you'd like to suggest, just feel free to leave it in the comments. But um, yeah, if you have any suggestions for other leagues you'd like me to cover or anything cool that you've noticed from other leagues that's a bit unique, uh, just let me know in the comments or on my Discord, which you can probably find in the description. Of course, this is a fairly long video, so if you did like the video and make it this far, then feel free to give me a like. And if you want to see more videos like this where I'll run through some of the teams in different leagues, then feel free to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. But for today's video, that's all I have written down. So I'm going to say goodbye and I'll see you in the next one.